You see, in all honesty, Terry did not want to come to this place, for his cousin Ashley convinced and forced him to come, for she had made preparation for them to meet some friends as a sent forth for him, for he was going away because he enrolled himself in the army. Terry was not feeling it. He would have preferred for them to go to a bar and have a couple of drinks than sightseeing for he doesn't do well with crowd. Moreover, Terry's life wasn't smooth sailing. His father had just passed away and he had split up with his girlfriend Mary for no reason and he was in no mood for this trip. As much as Ashley tried to cheer him up, he was less enthusiastic and that's not because he was being a prude. He just had a lot to deal with for the moment for he was going away and was determined to walk in his father's footstep. Ashley tried to dissuade him from this path he was taking but Terry was adamant. Ashley was a bit suspicious of Terry for she couldn't understand the reason why he was going away and most importantly split up with Mary in which she thinks it has something to do with Rachel, one of their friends. But Terry told her nothing happened between them. As they were about to talk further on the Rachel situation, all their friends who came for the sent foot arrived and Mary was with them. And as much as they tried to cheer Terry up, he was still in no mood. He was miserable. In fact, if he had his way, he would prefer not to be here. It is said that when you are at the top most high of the Empire State Building, you could see the whole of New York. On the 74th floor, there were engineers working in one of the offices, which had a chamber which had not been opened since the building was built, and they don't know what was in the chamber. When they finally opened it, they discovered a room which was dark, and when they used their torchlights, they could see hieroglyphs on the walls. As one of the engineers tried to check what was in the roof by trying to open a part of the ceiling, a hand popped out, which sent him into a frenzy and terrified he fell and crashes on the floor. Outside the Empire State Building at the 33rd Street where the homeless sleeps and beg for arms, they began to approach the building like someone or something was summoning them. At this time, Mary couldn't comprehend why Terry split up with her, for she asked him to give her a cogent reason why they can't be together, but he didn't want to talk about it, so he just said something to make her feel less guilty, for she thought the split up had something to do with her. But the truth is, Terry was in a state of mind where he doesn't know what he wants for now. At the same time, the security of the building were looking for a streaker who was running around butt naked at the top of the building. And the last floor he was last seen was at the 60th floor. As Jackson sprinted to the lift, not because he was late, but because he was trying to catch up with Gabrielle, whom he had deep feelings for. And he never ceased to let her know how he feels about her. And for a number of times, he had asked her out, but she always put it off for some reason which mainly had to do with her daughter. Jackson thinks the reason she always say no is because she is way out of his league, but she assured him it wasn't so. Not too far away from them, by the entrance, one of the homeless individuals wanted to enter the building, but the security by the door tried to stop him, and out of nowhere, he struck the security officer with his claws, which were not hands, tearing and ripping into him and devouring him, but that did not end there as more homeless looking people rushed into the building attacking and tearing into any living being on their way. It was a bloody feast. It was as bloody as it was brutal. It was disastrous as people began to run for their lives in confusion for no one knows what was happening and they couldn't run fast or far enough as the monsters tore into them by ripping and eating their flesh by devouring their souls. While this was going on in the building, bodies were falling down like bags of sand. The police opened fire at the creatures. They were met with a surprise. Their bullets were ineffective as they were attacked and devoured. Terry and his friends were stuck in the building as Mary led the way. Suddenly, a monster, which was lurching in the roof, jumped down to attack them. Got one of them as the rest of them ran in different direction for their lives. Walking down the stairs, terrified, Terry and Mary were on their own, for they lost their friends in the attack as everyone ran for their lives in different directions. In confusion, not knowing where to go and scared out of their minds, a door swung open as Gabrielle invited them into an office where some stars of the building were hiding and barricading themselves from the monsters. And this was on the 86th floor. Every one of them was scared out of their wits. Outside the building, the FBI believes this was a coordinated terrorist attack like 9-11 as 
bodies were falling down from the skyscraper. And as a result of not knowing what was happening inside the building, they decided to cut off all communications and electricity in the building. A report was acquired that a large group of assailants, disguised as the homeless and believed to be well-trained, are the terrorists attacking people in the building. The deputy director of the FBI immediately requested for the blueprints of the building and an expert who knows every nook and cranny of the building. At the 75th floor, those who are still alive were dragged to the presence of their master against their will as Terry and Mary hide away in the office with the staffs of the building. It was eminent that this was going to be a very long, long night. I can see